Big thanks this year to Cirrus for sponsoring our coverage of Oshkosh. While I was there, I had a chance to chat with Ivy MacGyver, who gave me an update on Cirrus activities throughout the year. People are very excited about the automatic database downloads. Um, basically, the, your updated databases will download automatically to your airplane, so you never have to futz with your SD cards to update your databases. Everyone loves that one. And then, of course, Safe Return is really the star of the show. Um, that really has done a couple of things. One, it's actually brought a lot of new people into aviation, people who had considered it, but this is one extra safety feature that really sort of put them over the edge to say, yes, I want to consider aviation. The other thing that we've seen is people are staying in aviation. So people who either had sold their airplane and were getting out of aviation or were considering um, selling their airplane and not getting another one, they're actually saying, you know what, I'm going to buy a G7 Plus and having safe return gives me the peace of mind to stay in aviation. So just talk us through how does safe return actually work from a, from a kind of non-technical, if I'm a non-technical, non-pilot passenger, what happens and how do, I, how do I make it work? So when safe return is activated, it actually can activate in a couple different ways. Uh, the most obvious way is by pushing the red button in the ceiling. And what happens when you push that red button is the occupants in the cabin are alerted that the safe return system has been activated and the autopilot engages in level mode. And you've got this 10 second period where it's giving the occupants in the cabin the uh, alert that the system's been activated, but doesn't do anything but engage the autopilot. And that actually is built in so that if it gets engaged auto uh, by accident, the pilot can disengage it and nothing changes, no communication happens or nothing. After that 10 second period, the airplane basically becomes an autonomous vehicle. So Safe Return takes over the screens, the icing system, the communications, the navigation, the fuel pump, the flaps, the mixture, the throttle, and basically performs all the things that a pilot might do. So the uh, Safe Return will communicate with emergency frequency um, or the center or whatever frequency you're talking to. It will, um, adjust the mixture and the throttle to engage in a cruise altitude, and then we'll set up for an approach and landing. It will deploy the flaps when it needs to, and it basically goes through an algorithm to identify the most appropriate, nearest uh, suitable airport to go land, and then communicates with the internal passengers to say, like, hey, I've gone through this algorithm, there's nothing that you can do. We're going to navigate to this particular airport, we're gonna be there, and." X amount of minutes, we're going to land with X amount of fuel. So like it really keeps the passengers informed all while doing the navigation um, and actually flying the plane to the safe return airport um, and communicating with ATC. Now, as it's making its descent down to the runway, it deploys the flaps to 50%, which is approach flaps for this, uh, for this approach. Um, so it'll be 50% flaps, um, 90 knots. It'll come down to about 60 feet above the runway and then it will bring the throttle to idle, fly the flare sequence, bleed off the airspeed, land the plane, engage the brakes, bring the plane to a complete stop, retract the flaps, and pull the mixture back so it actually shuts down the engine. Once the engine is shut down, it will alert the passengers of what to do from them. So it really just takes over the piloting duties in the absence of a capable pilot, um, takes control of the airplane, flies it down to a safe landing, full stop, engine shut down, um, so the passengers can safely get out of the airplane. So the only briefing that the passenger needs to get is really how to activate the system. Once they've done that, they don't need to worry about anything else. That's right, exactly. So there's nothing that the passengers need to do. All they need to know is if something happens to their pilot, the pilot is unresponsive, all they need to do is hit the red button. Now, if a pilot is um, flying alone um, or, uh, you know, like no one is pushing the button, the system is smart enough to realize either the pilot hasn't interacted with the system and I, as the airplane, or the airplane has detected that the pilot may be incapacitated because they're not interacting, safe return will automatically activate. Same thing if the pilot is behaving erratically. So if it is engaging the automatic uh, electronic stability protection too many times in a row, um, it assumes that the pilot is performing erratically um, and will automati automatically engage the safe return system. Now, the safe return system can be deactivated at any time during the sequence by hitting the autopilot disconnect. So 
if the pilot's incapacitated, you've activated safe return, and at some point in time, the pilot um, becomes able to fly the plane, um, then they can disconnect the autopilot and fly as usual. They may need to make a phone call to the FAA, fill out some paperwork, but ultimately, um, you can disconnect it at any time if the pilot feels capable enough to bring the plane in for landing. And, okay, it's, it's, it's been active at least in the Cirrus SR series, because I believe it's like available on the 22 and the 20. It's available on every single SR series. So I say, I say as available, a, it comes as standard now. It is now a standard feature. Okay, um, and so that's been for three months, but I don't think across any uh, safe return we've had any activations yet, is that true? Uh, that's correct. So um, the safe return system has been out for quite some time. It's been on the Vision Jet and it's on a number of other airframes, um, newly to the SR. Um, but to date, we haven't seen a safe return activation. Um, the SR series does have a pretty high production rate, right? So you're seeing, you know, six or 700 planes a year coming off the production line. So if you've kind of fast forward, once we get to about a year and a half or two years of the SR series being in production with safe return, there'll be more SR series with safe return than any other airframe combined, including the Vision Jet. Do you have a little note on your desk that says, today may be the day? <laughs> no notes, I have a very clean desk. Well, in addition to Safe Return and the automatic database updates, um, we did introduce the runway occupancy awareness. Um, so if you get close to a runway and there is either an aircraft on the runway or an aircraft approaching the runway, it will give you an alert to say, hey, don't enter this runway because there's actually traffic on the runway, which is really super helpful. Like if you kind of, up, let's just say you approach a runway at an uncontrolled field and you look around and you don't see any airplanes on the ground, you're alerted, hey, don't take the runway because there's actually someone on short final that you may not have seen. That's a very cool feature. I mean, there's been a lot of high profile runway incursions kind of lately in the news. Uh, and this is, uh, you know, just something to help the pilot be a little bit more aware of their surroundings and give you a warning um, so that you can avoid any runway incursions. Cirrus has a program called the XI Personalization Program, and it's a program where you can work with our design team to design a one-of-one, -one, very unique airplane designed by you and made for you. This is the latest example of our XI design team's vision um, and the family's vision. So this airplane was designed by a family uh, just to be like a super fun reflection of their personality. You can see we've got a lot of really bold colors on the outside. And then we've brought the outside inside. So you'll see accent stitching that matches the wings. You've got rudder pedals that actually match this, um, this accent color here. Um, and it's just a really super fun, loud, um, really interesting and unique design. Um, that the family actually spent the day at the Vision Center in Knoxville, Tennessee with our design team, actually picking out stitch patterns and leathers, uh, different kinds of leather, different colors of leather, and obviously uh, the different colors and, uh, and different paint lines. So it's a really fun program and it kind of elevates your airplane to be really that deep reflection of your own personality. And uh, I mean, who wouldn't be very excited to walk up to this plane and hop in it and fly it? So how many how many XI aircraft are oh, there a year? Yeah, we make a limited amount um, of XI airplanes uh, in the range of about twenty. So it's it's a pretty small uh, it's a pretty small program uh, because it does take an awful lot of extra care. It takes a longer time to design the plane, um, and then each one of the pieces, uh, from an aesthetic standpoint, are custom ordered. So it just takes a long time to kind of build. We can only handle uh, just a few of them a year. Presumably there's some, some kind of limitations like dark color on the wings, for example. Yes, exactly. So um, there are definitely limitations in terms of where we can put color, how dark the color can be. Um, the paint actually is it, uh, all around the airplane has some restricted restrictions. It has to absorb less than amount of a certain amount of heat and reflect more than a certain amount of light. And the, the rules are a little bit different on the fuselage and on the wing, but we really um, kind of work with our paint vendor to actually come up with a paint formulation that fits the customer's needs in terms of the color that they want, but also fits the uh, requirements of the airplane. Ivy, if you were to select your own XI airplane 
for Ivy McIver, what would it what would it be? What would it reflect? Oh man, um, you know that's a great question. I haven't ever thought about designing my own airplane, but um, I think it would be uh, a little fun, a little whimsical, um, probably less sharp lines, probably more kind of like flowy lines. I would think. Um, you know, I love the Himalayan salt uh, color. Um, I love the Titan gray color. So maybe a combination of those, maybe a little bit of a, like a darker blue in there somewhere. Do I don't know, watch this space. Maybe I should go design an airplane. You should. Do you have a gallery on your website of all the XI? Uh, we don't. And actually that's strategic. Um, what we want is for people to really um, bring their own thoughts and creativity and inspiration to the design um, session as opposed to looking at past airplanes and saying, I want something like this. So we really encourage like unique personal creativity going into the design process. Fantastic, yeah. thank you. It's super fun.